Just going to run over some of the points in module 5 here. Uh, starting with the stochastic, I've well, widened the stochastic here at the bottom here, the slow stochastic indicator, and I'm just going to show you, I've put the Bollinger Bands on here, I'm going to take them off in a minute because I find them a little bit confusing. You can see how the Bollinger Bands, they do, they do work to some extent, and um, although I don't pay attention to them, you can see uh, I, I don't like too much information on my screen, just, I just get very confused very easily, uh, so I just keep things very simple. The, the Bollinger Bands do work to some extent. Um, there is a case, there is uh, what they call per, uh, analysis paralysis, where you've just got too much information on the screen and um, you, you get too confused. And, and I find that the, the Bollinger Bands do just muddle me up. But you can see how they do work. Uh, you can see that uh, all, even on, even in the bear trend, you know, we did hug that lower boundary there. And uh, and again, even on, on the upside here, it did, it did hold. So. They are worth looking at. You can experiment with them yourself. Uh, as I say, I don't find them particularly useful, but if I was to scroll along here, if I can, can scroll along here, then you can see, yeah, the Bollinger Bands do work. Here, here's one of those periods where you get the, uh, the squeeze, where we go sideways, Bollinger Bands narrow, and then of course they suddenly burst when you get the move. Um, can't really say anything more than just show you how they work nicely here, much of the time very nicely so if you combine it with other things such as the stochastic such as your moving averages and everything else it might be a useful tool I'm just going to take these off now and go back to talking about the stochastic which is an indicator that I do use a lot more it's something you've got to be careful because the stochastic is so easy to follow it's just so visual um, and you can glance at it and, and get a complete idea of, of what the stochastic is telling you it's too easy to over rely on it so I just want to emphasize that point again I think I did put it in the notes but I found myself often over relying on it cutting corners by looking at the stochastic and thinking oh yeah it's definitely going down because we're overbought and it's turned lower but you've got it it's only a piece of the puzzle so uh, here we go, beginning of uh, 2014, before the oil price collapsed in 2015, uh, sorry, in the, in the middle of 2014, uh, you can see we had some, a lot of sideways action. Now, the stochastic works particularly well when the market is moving sideways. So here we see, see a little dip into, into March, down to the 100-day moving average support. If you're thinking about buying it down here, you've got nice confirmation from the stochastic down here. Uh, as they crossed and turned higher, if you'd even waited for the crossover and for the turn on the stochastic, yeah, that would have, you wouldn't really have missed out on any of the rally. So really nice. In fact, even if you'd waited for the confirmation crossover above the lower 20% line, uh, then you would have really caught a nice, almost risk-free move here as we rallied up uh, quite significantly. Where did you get from 98.25 up to 102.24? Whether you'd have run it all that way, I don't know. But the stochastic certainly would have kept you in the trade, um, perhaps allowing you to, to eventually get the, get the move above the 200-day moving average. You can see the 200-day moving average doing a brilliant job there for several days. And then finally, we broke up. Uh, then the stochastic would have warned that we were getting a little bit overcooked and it turned lower. Uh, anyway, you get the picture. Uh, again here, uh, if you'd have been selling on this uh, stochastic crossover below the 80 line, you'd have perhaps caught that little move down to the 100 day moving average and again back up again here, we rallied. So you can see how the sideways action does allow you to catch quite a few decent little moves. You combine it with some support and resistance levels from all the other tools that you already know or are learning through the course. Uh, here's, a, here's a really nice one where we dipped down to the 200 day moving average. We didn't close below it and uh, we got very oversold. So you'd have uh, perhaps had an opportunity to catch that wave higher. That, what was that now? One, two, three, four, five days. I'm drawing in this little trend line here because this is when the stochastic gets tricky and it's not so useful. So you can see, uh, once we've broken below this trend line, we didn't know this as much as easy for me to say with hindsight, but you can see that the market then started to trend lower. And this is when the stochastic is not useful. So a little bit of sideways action here may have allowed you, allowed you to catch one or two moves, but you can see the stochastic in itself is getting quite confused because it's not managing to flow nicely like it did before, up and down to the boundaries. Uh, and then eventually the market starts to build momentum to the downside quite quite swiftly uh, dropping over the next one two three four months and of course the stochastic is really of no use whatsoever to you here even when you get dramatically oversold uh, this is about as oversold as it has been for a long time it's really of no use at all buying here really wouldn't have yielded much of a return uh, this was really just a, a triangle pattern uh, triangle formation, a continuation pattern, and once we broke the end of the triangle, the market then just collapsed again further. So 
you've got to watch this. If the market is in a trend and you're looking at perhaps these moving averages, we would have had a shorter term moving average here, 55 day or 20, 21 day moving average to help us uh, identify the trends uh, quicker than the 100 and the 200 day. Uh, then you, you would be aware that you would be ignoring the stochastics to some extent. So just be aware of that. Uh, the stochastic can remain oversold for an awfully long time. Um, uh, as you can see here, uh, again, a nice down move here for two months, very, very swift down move, continuing that bear trend as we broke below the March low here, and the stochastic remained in oversold territory for two months, really, almost from the beginning of that move down, in fact, because uh, because the sideways move here, the stochastic was already accelerating to the downside if you were if you were looking to get long here you would have really had a very nasty ride as the market just continued lower so you really have to be very careful as i say using the stochastic make sure you're using it in the right conditions uh, but when when it does work it, it works really nicely even here uh, when we were approaching resistance 100 200 day moving average 100 day moving average resistance this this would have given you new a nice clear confirmation as we became overbought stochastics crossed over and turned lower so the, these would have been really nice easy trades to catch using just simple move just just the moving average simple moving average and the stochastic would have would have given you very clear sell signals as we rallied up in a bear trend hit, hitting resistance and becoming overbought